Rules are continuously changing in Rise of Kingdoms, and the migration system is surely something that has been adjusted a lot over the time. Recently, there has been some confusion about the migration. I have honestly been confused myself, but after some research to confirm all the information, I hope that this guide will help you out to be up to date with the current rules for the migration and all the details around it. Passport pages, cost, credits, bundles, everything. Let's go! Hello everyone and welcome back to Wig Gaming. Migration. Something that players asked for and sometimes complained about. Making a migration system is very complicated under many aspects. The age of the account, the KVK cycle you are in, the commanders you have, the equipment you have, the events you had already the possibility to play, all of this influences the overall game balance. So if you have any doubts and concerns, please Drop a comment down below after you watch this video and let me know if you would like me to send a feedback to the developers for some aspects that maybe are unclear and worry you. If you enjoy Rise of Kingdoms content, on this channel I publish a lot of videos about the game, so make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing, you cannot imagine how much this helps the channel out, and it's 100% free. So, to migrate to another kingdom in this game, you need to acquire a certain number of passport pages for your character, depending on your current power. You can acquire passport pages in two ways. First, by purchasing them in your alliance shop using your alliance credits. Or second, you can purchase them in the shop, in the in-game shop, using your money. The bundle in question is the New World Bundle, and as any other bundle, has different price levels. You can max purchase it once every two weeks or so, and the most convenient tiers of this bundle are surprisingly the first two. The $5 tier will give you one passport page, the $10 tier, two passport pages, the $20 tier, three passport pages, the $50 tier, four passport pages, and the $100 tier, five passport pages, and you can buy the $100 tier for three times, for a total of 25 passport pages if you buy all the bundle tiers. As you can see from the picture I have prepared for you on the screen, the most efficient bundles are the first two, because you will pay basically $5 per passport page, while the more you buy, the more inefficient the cost per page becomes, up to $20 per page for the $100 tier. Of course, if you need to migrate quickly and you don't have alliance credits, then the only solution is to spend $385 to purchase the full bundle, if you need it all, of course. Speaking about this, on the screen there is now another graphic created by Abused Panda, shout out to her for the beautiful work, that tells you exactly how many passport pages you need to migrate according to your power, from one passport page only if you are below 10 million power, and up to 75 passport pages if you are over 100 million power. This graphic is a bit old though, I will ignore the credit grinding time, because Lilith has actually introduced the possibility to sell your Edelflip sculptures in the shop, as you can see here, and each sculpture will give you 5,000 credits. I just sold, I don't know, a lot of them. I really suggest you to sell them all after you max your Edelflaid out, because that will give you a ton of credits. You can get 20,000 credits per day by donating to the Alliance technology over here and constructing Alliance buildings, and I think potentially at least another 30,000 or 40,000 credits if your campaign is complete just by selling your daily Edelflaid sculptures, so the process of credits grinding has become actually much faster. Now, let's speak about the migration rules. The last update for the migration rules applied on 25th March 2021. This update essentially consents you to migrate backwards, but not forwards. Basically, you can migrate to newer kingdoms, but not to older kingdoms. That's because Lilith probably wants newer players to experience all the KVK cycles from the very beginning. The kingdom status is now based on the current season, which is split into battle periods, as you can see here, and of seasons. Battle periods means that your kingdom is inside the lost kingdom or in the preparation phase, 
and you cannot migrate into a kingdom with a battle period status. Off-season means the time in between the different kingdoms versus kingdoms events, and here is where the changes have been applied. 1. From the creation of a new kingdom and up to the end of KVK1, the previous rules still apply, which are essentially you cannot migrate to KVK1. 2. If you are currently in KVK2, inside a KVK2 or in the off-season, you can only migrate to another kingdom in the same off-season, so KVK2. 3. If you are currently in KVK3, Light and Darkness, inside a KVK3 or in the off-season, you can only migrate to another kingdom in the same off-season or to a kingdom in the KVK2 off-season. And of course, not in the KVK1 off-season, that's always off-limits. 4. If you are currently in a Conquest Kingdom, Season of Conquest, so Eric Anthem, Strife of the Eight, etc., which is basically anything above KVK3, you can migrate to another kingdom in the same off-season or to a kingdom in KVK3 or KVK2 off-season. And they also said that the matchmaking regarding Ark of Osiris, Osiris League and Lost Kingdom events will be adjusted to match this migration restriction. So for example, if I decide to migrate out of Kingdom 52, I could go back to any kingdom in off-season except KVK1, so I can go back to KVK3, KVK2 or another kingdom in the off-season of the Season of Conquest. Let's analyze this graphically to make things simple and easy to understand. If the arrow is red, it means that you cannot migrate. If the arrow is green, it means that you can migrate. So, for example, if you are in KVK1 and you want to go to KVK2 or KVK3 or Season of Conquest, you cannot migrate. So, that's a red. Same thing, if you are in KVK2 and want to go to KVK3 or Season of Conquest, you cannot migrate. And... Of course, same speech for KVK3 people who want to go to the Season of Conquest. They cannot migrate forwards. If I am in Season of Conquest and I want to go back to KVK3 and KVK2, I can go there. If I am in KVK3 and want to go back to KVK2, I can go there. But if I am in KVK2, KVK3 or Season of Conquest, I cannot go back to KVK1. So the arrows will be like this. A big yes here and then a big no here. So here everything gets stuck. KVK1 is untouchable. I hope everything is clear and this guide will be helpful to you. I think I touched all the most important topics, but if you have any more questions, please feel free to post them in the comment section down below. Subscribe if you feel like supporting this channel. As always, I will see you on the next one. Ciao!